Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. Hundreds of video games release every year. Some are rousing successes, while others are labeled failures. Every once in a while, however, a video game comes along where fans give pause and ask, what the hell happened here? Battlefield 5 is one of those games. It's like the Murphy's Law of video games. Everything that could go wrong did. Today, we're going to take a look at the game and the events surrounding its spiral. We're dissecting everything that went wrong with Battlefield 5 to acknowledge, understand, heal, and hopefully hold DICE and EA accountable in some way. It's also my hope that what we discuss here and in the comments will prevent a repeat of this in the future. It's taken a lot of work to put this all together, so if you could leave a like, that would be much appreciated. Also, make sure to sign up to win a neat microphone's worker bee in the video description. So, let's go back to the beginning. Battlefield 5's problems began from the moment it was announced. Many fans raised an eyebrow at a World War II setting right after World War I. Meanwhile, many more raised an eyebrow at how DICE presented the era in the game's reveal trailer. Battlefield 5 showcased World War II as a kind of carefree, swashbuckling battle. Environments were as bright and colorful as the look of the soldiers on screen. And this was an immediate problem. World War II in popular media is typically presented with a serious tone. And there's just something alluring about the time period. The stories that emerged are both tremendously inspiring yet horrifying technology and tactics evolved at an incredible rate, and the conflict shaped the world for decades to come. World War II spawned countless films, television shows, and books, all of which have influenced our cultural memory and preconceptions about what that fight looked like. Many Battlefield fans had certainly hoped to play a version of Saving Private Ryan, Fury, or Enemy at the Gates. What they saw unfold in the game's announcement trailer was anything but, and to many, it was almost a betrayal. It featured a squad of soldiers with outlandish cosmetics, face paint, beards, and even a prosthetic arm. While all of these things did actually make an appearance in World War II, some troopers in the American 101st used face paint, soldiers grew beards in tough conditions, and some like Vladimir Penyakov and pilot Douglas Bader fought with prosthetics, the problem with Battlefield 5's reveal trailer was how these things were presented. The game seemed hell-bent on selling cosmetics over setting without any idea of what kind of cosmetics to sell. And nowhere was that more problematic than with the appearance of the female soldier in the trailer. And let's get something straight here. Women did serve in World War II. Some female resistance fighters like Simone Seguin actually fought the Germans directly. Others, like SOE operative Virginia Hall, were vital in creating and operating spy networks. Coincidentally, Hall also had a prosthetic leg, but the vast majority of women were employed in non-combat roles. And there are some great, true stories of women in World War II. These women deserve to have their stories told, instead of shoehorning them into fictional spaces or those occupied by men. And the key here is that you trivialize and erase the adversity women actually face by doing this, and you also provide a base for those who would champion the idea of historical revisionism. The reaction to the trailer reflected this. It has over 14 million views and a resounding 541,000 dislikes on YouTube. And quite honestly, this is where the controversy should have ended. Dyson EA could have simply listened to community feedback and made an effort to make the game more authentic. But they didn't. Instead of listening and tweaking Battlefield 5's approach, EA and DICE doubled down and went on a PR offensive. When confronted with the backlash over the questions of historical accuracy and the inclusion of women in the game, EA's then chief design officer Patrick Soderlund chided these fans as uneducated and told them that if they didn't like the creative direction of the game, they didn't have to buy it. The arrogant comments would follow Battlefield 5 to the grave as many players took him up on his offer. Similarly, at a Battlefield 5 launch party, DICE used the hashtag Everyone's Battlefield, which in itself isn't a bad thing. That sounds great. Yes, I would love 
everyone to play Battlefield. And I do think it is for everyone, but it was juxtaposed on hateful reactions to the game's reveal. And now while those comments were obvious trolling, just baiting and mocking fans rarely goes over well, especially if you're part of a company that has struggled mightily in recent years with public opinion. You don't get the benefit of the doubt. No one assumes you mean well, and some will actually go out of their way to spread misinformation and discontent. And that is exactly what happened as Reddit was flooded with negative posts and the game was review bombed. The controversy over historical accuracy also spread into the game's single-player campaign, with much of the discussion surrounding the Norlis mission clearly based on Operation Gunnerside. In the real mission, Norwegian SOE commandos destroyed German heavy water production capabilities at Vemork in Norway and then sank a ferry carrying several hundred more kilograms of heavy water on nearby Lake Tin. In Battlefield 5's presentation, a young female resistance fighter and her mother are responsible for the destruction of the materials. And although it was a work of fiction and labeled as inspired by real places and events in marketing material, some fans still claim the game was trying to rewrite history by placing a woman at the center of events inspired by Operation Gunnerside. Had the game more clearly stated the events were fictional, like in an opening scrawl, it may have quieted those with legitimate historical concerns. Alternatively, DICE could have added something similar to the Codex from Battlefield 1. This interactive encyclopedia included real historical facts to supplement the fiction that was portrayed in-game, and it was very popular among those with a thirst for historical information. Subsequent Battlefield 5 trailers had a more serious tone, reflective of fan expectations, but for many, the damage was done. The FPS market is a highly competitive and saturated one. If players don't like what you have to offer, guess what? It's a simple decision to move on to something else, and many of them did. Those who remained and purchased the game were in for a wild ride. One of the major selling points of Battlefield 5 was its promised live service. Many players celebrated the death of Premium, myself included, while others worried it would mean the death of significant post-launch content. And it's important to remember that by the time Battlefield 5 launched, DICE had begun making significant headway with live service expansions for Star Wars Battlefront 2. This was encouraging for Battlefield players, but the content and quality many were hoping for just never materialized in Battlefield 5. The Panzer Storm map saw a short delay, and Al Sundan launched without the trademark Conquest game mode as issues were hammered out. Patches were held back as well, and some promise features were cut entirely, like the planned 5v5 competitive game mode. Maps for the cancelled game mode did make it into the game, but only for Squad Conquest, a much smaller game mode than traditional Conquest. However, the Merida and Mercury maps launched largely without incident. Still, significant bugs popped up from time to time, including an invisibility glitch that plagued the game for weeks. Yet even more wounds were self-inflicted, like changes to the game's time to kill. These changes made enemies more difficult to down and were largely unpopular with the fan base. Riots on Reddit eventually convinced DICE to revert the changes, but many players felt the developers weren't actually listening to the community. This comedy of errors piled up to the point where DICE was actually compelled to issue a statement on the future of the game and its live service back in August of 2019. Studio General Manager Oscar Gabrielson apologized for the state of the game, trying to provide encouragement to fans, saying, quote, I hope the work we put into Battlefront 2 is a testament to our long-term commitment to our games and our communities. We'll get Battlefield 5 back on track and make it the awesome game you all deserve. We'll provide updates along the way. Thank you for hanging in there." End quote. Less than a year later, however, Battlefield 5 is all but dead. To their credit, DICE did continue to improve the game and deliver content over the course of Battlefield 5. Operation Underground provided a much-needed jolt of nostalgia, 
and the War in the Pacific brought with it several maps, including reimaginings of Iwo Jima and Wake Island. Unfortunately, the long-awaited community games mode was underwhelming, and it took 18 months to deliver vehicle customization. Another ill-advised attempt to tweak the game's TTK was also met with hostility. On top of all this, cheating was now becoming a rampant problem, at least for PC players, and it exposed the limitations of the system EA had in place to deal with hackers. Developers promised the anti-cheat team was working to address the issues, but some players reported cheaters going months without a ban. Still, through all of this, it felt like Battlefield 5 was finally starting to find its footing, when suddenly the rug was pulled out from underneath it. In late April, Battlefield 5 senior producer Ryan MacArthur published a post on the official Battlefield blog titled, The Future of Battlefield 5. Devoted players clicked on the link, hoping for details on a new Russian expansion. Instead, they discovered that new content for the game would cease with the planned June update. This news was a gut kick for fans, and especially those that had stuck by Battlefield 5 from the beginning, waiting for that awesome game developers had promised. Others were less upset by the content of the post, but by what was missing from it. Nowhere did the post contain an apology or an admission of failure. The end of Battlefield 5 was announced with the same tone-deaf attitude as its beginning. While I suspect we'll hear a more appropriate obituary for the game when the final update drops, it was still aggravating to see a distinct lack of responsibility being taken for the game's premature demise. And this responsibility rests entirely on the shoulders of DICE and EA, and there will be long-term ramifications. Much of the goodwill gained through years of successful Battlefield games was wiped out in less than a year and a half. Promises were made and broken more times than I can count, and expectations were constantly lowered while confidence in DICE has cratered. I have from the beginning said that the handling of Battlefield 5 will determine how fans react to future releases, especially those run as part of a live service. EA and DICE had something to prove here, and unfortunately with Battlefield 5, it looks like they've proven they will hit the kill switch rather than sticking with a game's live service through adversity. And in some ways, that is understandable. It's smart from a business standpoint and dumb from a PR standpoint. But of course, EA isn't in the business of public relations. They're in the business of generating revenue. And I suppose the silver lining here is that all of DICE Stockholm is allegedly working on the next Battlefield game, set to release likely somewhere around holiday 2021. Assuming developers have been at it for quite a while already, that's hopefully enough time to create a product that will sway some players to return back to the franchise. We can only hope that DICE and EA have learned from the Battlefield 5 debacle. The next game needs to focus on gameplay and leave the politics behind. Get back to what really made Battlefield fun in the first place. Developers also need to streamline their update pipeline, create a more flexible live service system, crank out a solid anti-cheat, and find a way to acknowledge player concerns in an effective way. And I want to be clear about this, that if they don't accomplish that, it could be curtains for the franchise. I say this because the community has also learned some tough lessons from Battlefield 5. Don't pre-order. Don't buy the deluxe edition. Don't expect promises to be honored and don't expect new content if a game isn't thriving. It's now up to DICE and EA to change our minds. Again, I put this video together to acknowledge, understand, heal, and hopefully hold DICE and EA accountable in some way. Sometimes it's just good to put things to paper. Sometimes it's just good to say things and know that you're not the only one that feels this way about this particular game. Right? We were all in this together, but I also want to be supportive I know DICE to be full of passionate, talented developers who, with the proper time and resources, can build something incredible. As always, I am hopeful for the future of the Battlefield franchise, but I'm also curious where your head is at while watching this video. What do you think about the failure of Battlefield 5, and what do you think it will take to turn the franchise around in the next game? Tell me down below in the comments. 
Remember to get signed up for that neat microphones giveaway in the video description. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and tap the bell for the latest videos. I know I've been a little bit negative with videos here lately, but uh, hopefully we're going to try and put that to rest here with this one. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.